Okay, I was looking at this magazine the other day, National Fisherman. Somebody apparently figured that I should know about, uh, I don't know if it costs money or not, but they sent me at least one issue of it. They had this article in here about a ship that sunk from a doubler plated hull repair. And what basically you end up doing is you'd have your boat and I don't know, we'll give it a sail. There, it's a boat. Okay. And you have a hole that's punched through here or something, you weld something over it and you weld around it. And then if that's considered okay, apparently for a patch, but not for long term. Mm. And you're supposed to go back and fix the hole, I guess. I don't know the real, but they said that it was a big no-no and it sunk somebody's boat and didn't kill people, but it was a hazard. Um, the reason I bring this up is Many times you will see, oh, there might be some design of a piece of a equipment that's got multiple plates, and out here is an eye that you come to. So for this eye, which might be a lot bigger than all the rest of this bucketing, grabbing, whatever, we'll put some teeth on it there, make it look like a Warris bucket. Um, anyway, so what they would do back in the old days is they'd put on an extra piece coming back here and the end of it might have some extra length like that and this would be a secondary piece on both sides and they'd weld it around the edges to make sure you had good attachment on to it and that was a standard construction uh, method it is a uh, fish plate on the side they'd call it and what people have also done years ago it is a method of repair, but it's not encouraged today at all. Say we have a boom that is broken, and our boom is broken there. This is an excavator boom, a crane boom, which crane booms you're not supposed to be welding and repairing anymore at all. Um, but anyway, it is a boom, and it has this crack through it. And what people would do is they would fix the weld, and then they'd put a fish plate over it. And that was real common. So you'd have a plate like this. And the reason for the little angles on the end, and that's part of where it has its name, is so that you can give it extra weld all the way around so that you're catching more material. Normally the place where you really see this used a lot, and people are going to hate me in the comments for this, so go for it. Um, people that don't really know how to make a good weld. If you really don't know how to make a good weld, Early on, starting out, people do this because they're afraid of their repair on the crack that they did. They didn't do a good job, or they're afraid they didn't. I've seen both. Um, I've also seen a lot of times where people just totally ignore the crack, don't fix it at all, and just put a fish plate over it. Um, what will happen is the fish plate will break again right there, uh, just where the crack is. If you welded the crack and you did a bad job, you don't know where it's going to break next and you can't see the original crack to see whether it is solid or not. That's the big thing. You cannot inspect it and look at it. Uh, I had a friend that uh, someone had done one of these fish plate repairs, done a bad job on it. It was on an excavator, an older coring. It was old enough it was using hook rollers. It was sort of a half drag line, half excavator, but that's the way they were built in the 50s. It was either late 50s, early 60s. I'm not exactly sure when it was built. Anyway, it, uh, they didn't know it had all the problems it did, and all of a sudden it got to where this fish plate was the only thing that was holding it, and they went to pick something up, it ripped it off, and it threw him out of the cab from the reaction load of everything. It just flat threw him out, threw him just out on the ground, and he was not happy. And Anyway, so that was an interesting story. Another one... Similar, but this is a little more acceptable. At a mine, we had side of a chute, and underneath here is a conveyor that comes back. One's coming towards me, one's big long rubber conveyor. Okay, so this side rock's been hitting on it, there's a hole in there. Well, welded a plate over it. Okay, you know, we're not really rest of it structural, we're not too worried about, it. but anyway. Eh, or way down here. They welded another plate here. And this thing looked really ugly. It was on out, had plates and a piece wrapped around, and it was it was about four inches thick for something that started with half inch plate. 
It was just obnoxious. And we were on a shutdown at the mill. And uh, my friend Rich, we looked at this and I said, uh, you know, I didn't want to mess with grinding it all, all off. That's a big thing when you get all this, this much garbage that nobody's gone back to the original material. Is how do you take it off? How do you fix all that garbage? And so he said, yeah, I don't want to fix it. Either. We better take a bar to it though and just check it. So he took, and it wasn't a, it was a four foot bar, and he just pried a little bit and it went poop and the whole thing fell down on the belt. We said, yeah, okay. Well, we don't have to worry about removing it no more, and it's probably a good thing we checked it. And then we cut out a little piece of plate and welded a new patch in here. So, you know, one of the biggest things with this stacking welded pieces on top of pieces is you just can't see the original piece. Now, let's go back to our boom. We have our boom, and we'll even, shoot, we'll just fix the same boom we already had here. We don't need a new boom, because we're going to fix it. So we got this crack through here what do we do we could v this out and weld it um, we're going to kind of have problems there it's going to be tough to do simple way we come in here with a cutting torch and we just cut this bigger we open that old puppy up and then what you do is you put a backing plate inside behind it so you take a piece of uh, piece of plate and you weld, which the easiest way to weld something on it is just stick a rod on it. And now you have that rod. And you can turn it sideways, fish it in behind, and then you hold the rod to you. So you've now got a solid piece of plate. Our boom, let's draw our boom, and we cut a hole in there. And oh yeah, somebody had uh, mentioned on this that we should try and get closer with our framing to the board sometimes when I'm drawing. You know, I thought, so I should pass that on to cameraman because he was having trouble. Uh, but so then we have our piece of steel that we put in here behind and a piece of, of uh, wire hanging out and we hang on to it and then we fill all of this weld in. And you don't try and make this, you know, 20 foot wide here. You keep it narrow yet and you go ahead and bevel it so that you can make a good fill in, but that backup plate is, is how you can repair that and do a nice job. And then when you're all done, you have a repaired boom and you can continue to look at it if for some reason this is a stress point where it cracks again, you'll have a chance to keep an eye on it. So, yeah, I guess that's what I had to say about doubler plates and it came up because somebody sunk a boat by not uh, going back and fixing it right.